Hey everyone, welcome to the season finale of the Chinese Sayings Podcast. Man, that flew by. Episode 10 already. For the first time, I get to say this Cheng Yu, or Chinese saying, isn't from the Zhou Dynasty. No spring and autumn, warring states, or anything like that. We're in the fabulous Song Dynasty, the Northern Song, in all its splendor and glory. This is the time of the third Song Dynasty emperor, Zhen Zong. His father was the younger brother of the Song Dynasty founder, Zhao Kuangyin. We're still in the good old days, as far as the Northern Song is concerned. Today, we'll look at the backstory behind the old saying, Gu Ju Yi Zhe. Here's the blow by blow. Gu, in this case, means alone or solitary. Ju has several meanings, but here it means the stakes, as in, as in a gambling wager. Gu Ju, a single wager. Yi is the character for one, the number one. And Zhe means to throw, but in this example means to throw dice. Yi Zhe, one throw of the dice. A solitary wager, throw the dice. Okay, no need to explain what that means. You bet all your chips on one throw of the dice. Not terribly difficult. So, let me call Sherman and Mr. Peabody, and let's hop inside the Wayback Machine and head to the time of the late 10th, early 11th century, and let's see what's up with the Zhenzong Emperor. Let's introduce today's lineup of stars. I already mentioned the Song Emperor, Zhen Zong. There's also his chancellor, Ko Jun, and the minister, Wang Qin Ro. Those two were not friendly and close. We remember from all those CHP episodes that even though the Song Dynasty was a great time in Chinese history, commercially, economically, artistically, gastronomically, and in a dozen other ways, despite all that, they were surrounded by enemies. And the cost to defend themselves by maintaining massive six-figure standing armies and to pay off the various northern and western peoples, that cost was not small. Soon after Junzong became emperor, the great power of that day, the Chitan Liao dynasty to the north, they decided to test the emperor's mettle. I'm going with the Dan Carlin pronunciation. In Mandarin, these people were known as the Chitan. During the summer, in the year 1004, they invaded from the north, and Song forces battled them, but couldn't hold them back. And we feature the Chitan Liao founder, Abaoji, in an old CHP episode, number 126. In their day, they were the biggest and baddest of them all. So in this moment of crisis, with the Liao forces fast approaching... The emperor was first visited by his minister, Wang Qin Ro, who advised him, better close down shop and get out of town before the Chitans get here. He suggested to move the capital, which in those days meant to move the emperor, to where present-day Nanjing is on the south side of the Yangtze River. Another official, named Chen Yao approached Zhen Zong and suggested maybe it was a better idea to move the capital out to Chengdu far from harm's way, you know, where he came from. Now, no one was saying, let's stay and fight. Chen Zong was really starting to get a bad feeling about everything and went to his most trusted minister, Ko Jun, to ask him what he thought. Now, the important thing about Ko Jun is that in Chinese history, when you list out all the top ten chancellors or prime ministers, he always makes the list. He's one of the good ones. Anyways, he got wind of what Wang Qin Ro and Chen Yao So were advocating. And he went before Zhen Zong and said, you know, pretending not to know who made those two proposals, that abandoning Kaifeng was a terrible idea, and that whoever proposed such a thing, Ko Chun said, was committing a capital crime. Ko Chun and his supporters said they should stand and fight. He said that so great is His Majesty's royal presence... If he showed up to personally rally the Song troops against the Chitan Liao, it would lead them to victory. The Chancellor continued saying that the Chitan army, 200,000 strong, had come a long way and were in unfamiliar territory and worn out already. Song forces had several advantages over them. Why walk away from the ancestral temple in Kaifeng so easy? So persuasive was Ko Jun that the Emperor Chen Song followed his advice and he went out to the front to rally the troops against the Chitan Liao army. 
When he caught up with his army somewhere north of Kaifeng, the soldiers and civilian spirits were uplifted, and indeed the emperor's royal presence provided the moral support that allowed them to push the Liao back and to defeat them at the town of Chanyuan, a hundred miles north of the Song capital. And from this defeat of the Liao came the Treaty of Chanyuan, the Chanyuan Jermeng. The Chitans agreed not to invade Song territory in exchange for a huge chunk of change and for henceforth being treated as diplomatic equals to the emperor in Kaifeng. So they got paid off, essentially, but the arrangement worked for 20 years, and there was relative peace between Liao and Song. But if you remember from those past China History Podcast episodes, all the other bad guys surrounding China will see what the Chitans did, and they'll try and cut similar deals with the Song Emperor, and then the business model became untenable. So the Emperor went back to Kaifeng triumphant, and you can imagine... Kojun was the hottest property in the government. He was the one who came up with the idea to take the fight to the Chitans, and he stood by the emperor's side throughout the ordeal. But Wang Qinruo never forgave Kojun for challenging him so brazenly in front of the big guy, so he was bent on toppling Kojun. One day, when he had the emperor's ear, he at once began bad-mouthing Kojun and saying this whole Treaty of Chanyuan was a shameful moment for the nation. He compared the acquiescence at Chanyuan to a similar treaty from ancient times signed under duress when the enemy was already at the city walls. He really laid into how Kojun just gave away the store. And Wang Qinruo began to see the emperor was wavering now where he stood. So he said to him, Kojun was using the emperor's life as an all-or-nothing wager. He acted like a classic, reckless gambler. And in the book of Kojun, from the Song Shu, the book of Song, it said he was accused of Gu Ju Yi Zhe. And Wang Qin Ra was able to convince the emperor that his so-called loyal minister Kojun used the emperor as a Gu Ju, like a double-or-nothing wager. Maybe the wager succeeded, but it was a gamble that recklessly used the emperor's royal person. So, ever since hearing that, Chunzong began to give Kojun the cold shoulder. He didn't banish him or anything, but he did fob him off to a less prestigious posting than the palace at Kaifeng. And this Chengyu Gu Zhu Yi Zhe has come to describe a reckless gamble, betting the bank on one throw of the dice. So that... Me little beauties is going to be that. Gu Ju, a single wager. Yi Zhe, one throw of the dice. To bet the bank. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And sometimes the blues just get a hold of you. That's our Chung Yu for this time. Our tenth and final episode for season one. I'll be working with the whole team at the Chung Yu Yanjiu Zhongxin, our newly built Chung Yu Research Center, getting season two written, recorded, and all that jazz. I'm going to take a few weeks off. We'll relax in St. Bart's and maybe meet up with Ringo in Monte Carlo. We'll see. Rest assured, season two is coming your way soon, but not too soon. You know what they say about all work and no play. This is Laszlo Montgomery signing off once again from the City of Angels, California, USA, don't forget, there's more than just this Chinese Sayings podcast. There's the China History Podcast and China Vintage Hour, all from Teacup Media. Teacup.media. Go check it out. I'm not asking you to leave a review or five-star rating, but if you want to, I won't hold it against you. Take care, everyone.